Hello everyone, welcome back to my class. Today we will start new module which is module number 11. In this module we will talk about quarter and half wave plate and then we will analyze, uh, we will learn the ways of analyzing polarized light. Then the concept of opt optical activity will be introduced to you and at last a theoretical foundations to study plane wave propagation in anisotropic media would be talked about. Now we will today start with this quarter and half wave plate which is prominent and significant applications of what we learned in our uh, previous module which was devoted to double reflection, majorly devoted to double reflection. Now the half and quarter waves are nothing but they are interference of polarized light what type of interference here yeah, they we know that double refracting medium it splits unpolarized light into two uh, parts one is uh, first is called o ray and the second is called e ray now if we somehow make these ray interfere then we will uh, uh, get or we will uh, see a different kind of uh, control over the light Okay. Now, to understand the concept of half and quarter wave plate, let us consider the normal incidence of a plane polarized beam on a calcite crystal. Okay. Keep it in mind that calcite crystal is a negative crystal. Okay. Now, in this calcite crystal, we assume that optic axis is parallel to the surface of the crystal okay? and this crystal is shown here in this figure, figure number 1 and you see that the optic axis is parallel to the surface and it is pointing along z axis. Okay? Z axis is coming out of the paper. In the right hand direction, this is the direction of wave propagation which is x axis, the vertical axis is y axis while the axis which is coming out of the paper it is z axis and along the optic axis of this calcite crystal is along this z axis. Now if we launch a, a beam which is y polarized then let us see what happens. Now if a beam is y polarized that is if the polarization is vertical then you see that this polarization is perpendicular to the direction of propagation which is k the wave vector and this polarization is also perpendicular to the optic axis. Okay? It means y polarized light will behave as a O beam or O ray for the calcite crystal which is oriented like this. Okay? Therefore, if the incident beam is y polarized, the beam will propagate as an ordinary wave and the extraordinary wave will be absent. Similarly, if the incident beam is z polarized, then from the figure you can see that the direction of polarization now will be along the optic axis while it would be perpendicular to the k that is direction of propagation x axis okay? and this polarization is also in a plane which is formed by optic axis and the k vector. Therefore, a jet polarized beam will behave as a E wave in calcite crystal okay? and therefore, there will not be any E wave or ordinary wave. Okay? It is all the game of polarization now. But for any other state of polarization of the incident beam, both extraordinary and ordinary components will be present. Okay? First we talked about two extreme cases, where in only one type of wave is present either ordinary or extraordinary. But now, if the state of polarization is such that the orientation of the vibration is neither in along z nor along y, but it is along 
at angle with respect to z, then the both ordinary and extraordinary component will be present. Okay? Now, for neg negative crystal like calcite where N O is larger than N E, the extraordinary wave will travel faster than the ordinary wave. Okay? Because N E is smaller therefore, V E would be larger the velocity of extraordinary wave will be larger therefore, extraordinary wave will travel faster. Therefore, we represent the polarization which only support extraordinary ray as fast direction okay? and the polarization direction which only supports ordinary ray it is represented as slow direction and which is shown here you see this is in these two direction you see that there is uh, O f and in parenthesis S O means ordinary O stand for ordinary wave and S means slow. Similarly, E stands for extraordinary wave and F means fast. Yeah? This is fast direction while this is slow direction. Why? Because calcite crystal is negative crystal and extraordinary ray travel faster. And if a ray is polarized along X Z direction, it will only support X E wave and therefore, the E word is here. Similarly, for O also. Yeah? Now, let the electric field say of amplitude E naught is incident and it is polarized in such a way that it makes an angle phi with the z axis which is shown here in this figure. Yeah? The angle phi is, is here and uh, this is angle is made with respect to z axis. Okay? and uh, the amplitude of the incident wave is E naught. Okay? And since this uh, linearly polarized incident wave is polarized at angle phi with respect to z axis, then such a beam can be assumed to be a superposition of two linearly polarized in phase beam that are polarized along y and z directions. Yeah? we can always split this uh, linearly polarized beam in its z and y components yeah because it is making an angle phi with a z component it, and therefore uh, with the y axis it will make 90 minus phi uh, degree angle and you can always split it into two components okay since the incident amplitude is e naught the amplitudes after this decomposition along y and z direction would be represented by e naught sin theta and e naught cos theta because you know yeah this is z axis this is our y axis and this is the polarization direction therefore along z we will have e naught cos phi while along y we will have e naught sin phi components okay the z component which is along optic axis it passes through as an extraordinary beam and since it is passing through an extraordinary beam it will have a velocity which is equal to c by n e while the white component it passes through as an ordinary beam propagating with a velocity c by n o or n naught okay now we know that n o is not is, is equal to n e therefore the two beams they will come out of the crystal with different phase okay since the velocities are not same therefore they will come out with different phase the y and z component of this incident beam can be written in this form which is given by equation number 1 and 2 respectively the y component is given by e naught sin phi cos kx minus omega t while z component is given by e naught cos phi cos kx minus omega t x is the direction of the propagation and these are the e naught sin phi and e naught cos phi is the amplitude. Okay? And this is the incident beam, okay? it has not and it is propagating in the direction x. Now, at the first surface let us associate the, uh, uh, the coordinate system in such a way that x is equal to 0. 
okay. We have this calcite crystal and at the first surface of the calcite crystal we assume that x is equal to 0. Okay. In this case at the input phase of the calcite crystal the y and z components are represented respectively by equation number 3 and 4 wherein we just substituted x with 0. Now at the input we know the form of the field let us calculate the field at the output. Okay. Now say that crystal has certain thickness, but the wave propagate through this th thickness so that, that at any depth inside the crystal the y component of the field can be written as E naught sin phi cos N naught k x minus omega t, where x is the depth inside the uh, crystal, N naught is its refractive index and k, k is the wave vector. Similarly, for z component which is propagating as extraordinary wave, the field would be written as E naught cos phi cos N E k x minus omega t. Okay. Earlier at the input phase of the crystal when x was 0 it was only cos omega t in both the cases in both the component. Okay. But as soon as it enters into the crystal the x would be non-zero and we will have n naught k x. Okay. Had it been a vacuum it would have been k x only, but since we are in a, uh, the waves are traveling in a medium we will have to multiply k x with refractive index as we have done in uh, earlier cases in uh, geometrical optics. Yeah. Now the phase contribution would be k x into n, but we have two types of wave ordinary wave and extraordinary wave therefore we will have two n's. For ordinary wave we will write n as n naught while for extraordinary ordinary wave we will write n as n e and this is why we have equation number 5 and 6. Okay. Now if the crystal thickness is d then at the other a phase of the crystal at the emerging surface of the crystal we will have the fields which uh, would be given by equation number 7 and 8 respectively. Okay. Here the theta naught and theta e are given by these expression. Okay. What we have done here is that we just replace x by d okay, because the total thickness of the crystal is d. Therefore, n naught k d is here in the equation number 7 and n e k d is there in, in equation number 8 okay, and they are uh, expressed by theta naught and theta e respectively. Okay. Now, it is the relative phase between the waves which ultimately matters. Therefore, we can shift or tune our instant t is equal to 0 in such a way that the components e y and e z are written like this here. Okay. We shifted all the phase from equation number 10 to equation number 9 because it ultimately it is relative phase between the wave which matters. Yeah. Phase is not an absolute quantity, it is always measured with res respect to something, with reference to something. Okay. We uh, made E z as our reference therefore in the phase we have omega t only left here in equation number 10 and all the phase, all the relative phase appear in equation number 9 only where theta is nothing but theta o minus theta i. Yeah. Earlier theta o was there in equation number 7, theta is in equation number 8. Now theta is only appearing, the relative phase is only appear in equation number 9, where theta is theta o minus theta i. If you substitute the expressions of theta o and theta i, then you get these form, which is given by equation number 11. Okay. Equation no number 11 is nothing but phase difference between the ordinary and extraordinary beam. Now, if the thickness of the crystal is such that theta is equal to 2 pi 4 pi then from equation number 9 and 8 uh, 9 and 10 you can see that uh, the e y and e z components are the same they, they don't have any difference in their expression under this situation the emergent beam will have the same state of polarization as the incident beam yeah at the input the e y and e z component were same but due to the different refractive indices for O and E ray, the crystal introduced different phases to these two rays and due to these two differences we were expecting that the state of polarization will change. But if phase introduced by the crystal 
is uh, integral multiple of 2 pi, then the state of polarization of the incident beam will be the same. Okay. Now, if the thickness of the crystal is such that, that the relative phase difference is pi by 2, then the crystal is uh, said to be a quarter wave plate Q w p, because pi by 2 is one quarter of 2 pi the whole circle. Okay. A phase difference of pi by 2 implies a part difference of quarter of a wavelength okay. and this quarter is borrowed in quarter wave plate. Okay. Similarly, if the thickness of the crystal is such that theta the phase difference introduced is pi, then the crystal is said to be half wave plate again because pi is one half of full circle 2 pi r one half this is equivalent to part difference of a half of a wavelength. Therefore, a crystal which introduces a phase difference of pi is called half wave plate or uh, the acronyms for half wave plate is HWP. Now, as a example let us consider a case when y and z component of the incident wave has equal amplitude and the crystal introduces a phase difference of pi by 2 half wave plate yeah. and phi the initial uh, state of polarization is such that phi is equal to pi by 4. If you substitute for theta and phi in uh, expression number 9 and 10 then uh, we get equation number 12 and 13. And from equation 12 or 13, you can see, you can readily check that these are nothing but they combinedly represent a circularly polarized light. If you square and add them, you get a equation of a circle as is given by equation number 14. Then what we found is that if we launch a light which is polarized at angle 45 uh, degree with respect to the z axis and if this light is incident on a quarter wave plate, then this linearly polarized light is converted to a circularly polarized light and this is the beauty of these wave plates. Okay. They convert the polarization. Now, in order to introduce a phase difference of pi by 2, we will have to tune the thickness as per equation number 11. Let us go to equation number 11 and check. Now, the phase difference theta this you can see is equal to omega by c and not minus n into d. We want theta to be equal to pi by 2. For this, the only variable is d. Now, if we tune d such that theta becomes pi by 2, then we will have a wave plate which is called quarter wave plate. Okay. Therefore, if you substitute theta by pi by 2, then you will get an expression for d which is equal to 1 by 4 lambda naught by n o minus n e. And if we have a crystal with such a thickness, then this crystal is called quarter wave plate. Okay. In addition, if the thickness is an odd multiple of the above quantity, that is if d is equal to 2 m plus 1 lambda naught upon, lambda naught upon 4 n o minus n e. In this case, if m is 0, 2, 4, then the emergent wave will be right circularly polarized R C P okay, for theta is equal to phi is equal to pi by 4. And if m is equal to odd number 1, 3, 5 and so on, then the emergent wave will be left circularly polarized L C P. Yeah. Always remember that y polarized O wave in calcite has smaller velocity and hence it is referred as slow wave, hence shown as O in bracket S and E wave is the fast wave, hence shown as E in bracket F. Yeah. This is all about uh, quarter wave flight. Now, we will uh, see what will happen if theta is equal to pi, what will happen if instead of quarter wave plate, we have a half wave plate and we launch a light with state of polarization oriented in such a way that phi is equal to pi by 4. Now, in this case also we get the two components as E y and E z, but from equation number 17 and 18 you can see that this is not a circularly polarized wave. It is a linearly polarized wave. 
with a direction of polarization making an angle of 135 degree with the z axis. Okay? You said that as you vary the thickness of the crystal when theta is equal to pi, the output is no more uh, circularly polarized light, it is linearly polarized light, but the direction of vibration is now rotated. Initially, the vibration was along phi is equal to pi by 4, but now it is at 135 degree with the z axis. Yeah. Now, if we pass this beam through a calcite quarter wave plate, then the emergent V will again be a circularly polarized and in particularly we will get left circularly polarized light. Now, instead of launching a linearly polarized light on a half wave plate, if you launch a right circularly polarized light normally on calcite half wave plate, the emergent v beam will be left circularly polarized. Okay? Thus, the half wave plate will have a thickness would which would be given by equation number 19 yeah this again came from equation number 11 okay but note that if the thickness d is such that phi th theta which is the phase difference is not equal to pi by 2 or pi or 3 pi by 2 or 2 pi then the emergent beam will be elliptically polarized till now we just talked about negative cluster where n o is greater than n a but what would be the situation if the crystal is positive? Okay? In positive crystal, N e would be larger than N o. Now, if N e is larger than N o, then uh, the, our equations, the previous equation 9 and 10 where we wrote um, the field components in terms of relative phase, it will be changed. Now, you see, now let us go to equation number 9 and 10. You see here, here the phase part is omega t minus theta, but if n e is larger than n o, then equation number 11 changes. Okay, theta is negative now because the n o minus n e would be replaced by n e minus n o. There would be one extra negative sign before theta, and therefore equation 9 modifies. Okay, and then this modification results equation number 20 and here you see it is omega t plus theta prime, where theta prime is omega by c d n e minus n o. And for quarter wave plate, we know that d is equal to 2 m plus 1 lambda naught by 4 n e minus n o. Now, uh, observe the difference in the denominator instead of n o minus n e, we now have n e minus n o. This is the only difference and m is integer here. Okay? Hence, in the first figure, the calcite uh, crystal quarter wave plate, if it is replaced by a uh, quartz quarter wave plate, the emergent wave beam will be left circularly polarized, okay, which is shown here. Yeah. This is all for today. I end my lecture with this and thank you for joining me.